Good morning. How's it going? I told myself I wouldn't say good morning today because, you know, you might not be watching this in the morning. So, um, hello, I'm Sarah Mee, and I'm sewing the port side dop kit. So it's the, the little boxy bag that's inside the port side travel set. And it's got a little zipper pocket right here. And it's fully lined. <clears throat> and you will see that I have not hand sewn mine yet. And now you'll see why. I really wanna make a version where I don't have to hand sew <laughs> because I'm such a wimp when it comes to hand sewing. I know I've told you guys this before. So. Okay, so here is my bag fully lined. Hey, Brooke. <laughs> Brooke and I were just talking about puppies because I'm getting a puppy. So excited. So um, this is where you would hand sew it right here along the zipper. And um, it's quite easy to sew this whole thing together pretty quickly. Uh, the hand sewing would definitely add to your overall time. But I think I figured out a way. I haven't tried it out yet. But I think I figured out a way to make one without the hand sewing. And and you know what? I just, I'm wearing my jacket because I realized when I walked into the studio today, I'm like a fangirl for Grain Line Studio today because I've got my top kit, my Tamarack jacket, and my Archer button up. So um, I'm going to take it off soon though because I'm going to get warmed up talking with you. <laughs> Hi, Maria. <laughs> well, you know... Um, I have this, I don't know if you guys know this, but I have this really extensive collection of black and white cat fabrics. Hi, Carol. Um, because I was planning on making a quilt, and I actually have started this quilt, um, and it's been a few years, and I'm just not a quilter, so I'm still chipping away at it. But I think I actually came up with something that's going to kind of spur me on. Yeah, I love Grain Line too, Carol. I think their patterns are top notch. Um, there's a few patterns I always like, no, if I try it, it's going to work great. So, um, so yeah, so this uh, fabric I didn't use on my quilt yet. It's actually like a linen cotton, so it's pretty scratchy for a quilt. It wouldn't matter on the top, though. It's so cute. And I have a black cat and a white cat, and <laughs> we seem to always have black or white animals. Um, and our dog, Molly, is the first animal that we've ever owned that's not black or white. <laughs> She's ginger. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's for my quilt. So this is the quilt backing that I picked. I don't know if you can see that there are cats, black and you know it's black and white, and it's cats. Oh, my thread is about to roll off the table there. Um, it's a really cool like kind of folk print with the um, mirroring. Wait, where's the? Uh, I don't have any. I didn't really fussy cut the lining because I'm trying to use as little of, as possible it's just so I can still use it for my my uh, quilt. Hi, Ida. Okay, so. We're making this little bag. It is like a boxy bag. So if you've seen boxy bags um, and you want to make your own, sorry, there's a siren going by. I'm actually really close to a fire station. I can't believe that hasn't happened before. Um, if you wanted to make a boxy bag, this would be a good starting pattern. It's a little bit more constructed than the typical one um, that you see out there, but uh, it would be really nice as a gift for someone who needs like a bathroom kit, you know? And I thought I'd make a few for gifts and also for some of the survivors of the campfire folks here because um, they are on the go right now. And um, I'm sure they've got some of that sorted out by now, but you just never know. They may be using a hand-me-down or something that someone donated. So I thought I'd make a few. So let's see here. I've got all kinds of things going on here. I'm going to make one out of this leftover succulent fabric. I got this on Spoonflower. I'm sorry I don't know the designer off the top of my head. Um, I didn't have very much of it. I hoarded the last little sliver that I had and it was enough to make one of the dop kits out of it. And um, I know someone with a very green thumb who's gonna really love this. And then the lining I picked was one I used on the closet organizer. I still have a lot of that and I thought it went really well. Looks a little better in person, I will admit. So, um, and then I found, I have this really cool zipper. I'm gonna make this work somehow. Um, cause I've never had a reason to use it, but I'm going to use it on the top of my bag. And then I've got just little bits and bobs sitting here because I think my zipper's just not quite long enough. So I can, at least I can show you how I would lengthen the zipper in a situation like this because it's a big enough 
opening, uh, having a little less um, of an opening is not going to affect it too negatively, and it'll be worth it for the cute zipper. So, <laughs> you know. And then I have another one all laid out behind me in in black. So we'll see if this will sew on camera very well. Black with this, a very masculine one. So. Oh, I think I know who made that bag, Maria. <laughs> All right, let's take off my jacket. Let's get down to business here. I really love wearing it. I forget I'm wearing it, to be honest. It's so comfortable and it just sits so well on me. Like it just hangs perfectly. It does not move. It does. It's not fussy at all. I really hate fussy clothes. It's a little tight when I go like this um, and I have an idea of how I would fix that next time. I'd probably just make the back a yoke seam and then add a pleat on the bottom part so that there's a little bit of give, like kind of like the archer. So that's my strategy. Okay, so first I'm gonna lengthen this zipper so then we can get to sewing it and so here, I know it has to be this long. And my my like top of my zipper is here to there. So I need about a fat inch. So I think what I'll do um, is just add like a little piece of fabric to the bottom of it. And then that way I have the whole length to work with. And I, I'm kind of thinking of doing this in a creative way I might just use this fabric like that. Let's see. Cause this doesn't, this doesn't quite match. My bindings don't quite match. They're a little more yellow. This is a little too pale. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna use the self. What I, I always call the main fabric the self. It's just, sorry, it's just a term I use. I know nobody else uses it. It's just an industry thing. I don't think I'll use the lining either. I'm kinda tempted to, I have to admit. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe I'll try and use some of the lining. So let's, um, let me cut off a piece here. Just gonna cut off a chunk really badly. Put this away. And I need this to be like an inch wide finished. So, I'm gonna um, gonna make like a like a tube, and let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of eyeball this about right there. This is me at my machine all, all the time. <laughs> I'm winging it, <laughs> so you won't you probably won't have to do this. I, I hope you don't. <laughs> I won't have to do it on the other one I'm making. I actually have a zipper for it. This was a last second thing and I was like, ooh, this sounds fun. All right, so of course I have to thread my needle in front of you. I saw this really interesting, um, ooh, that one's so good. Um, I saw this really interesting needle threading technique, but it won't work on the, my machine because the needle needs to be loose and then you, you lay the thread on, on your palm like this. It was like in my Instagram thing. It looked like a it looked like a fake thing. And then you lay the eye of the needle on there like this and then you go like this. And it like magically goes through the eye of the needle. Probably because it's like the path of least resistance. So I thought, ooh, I'm gonna do that when I have to thread my machine. Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> All right, where's my my loop turner. Oh, I actually put it right here. I have two of them, but I put one right here. This is why I don't put it in my drawer. I actually can't grab it. All right. So this is a perfect instance for my loop turner. And this is kind of like how you make the handle of this bag. You just sew it into a tube and then turn it. We'll leave that out for later. Let's see, did I get it about the right width? Okay, so the reason this is, this is the way I'm doing this uh, too is that 
This zipper is sewn. Hi, Malin. How's it going? Um, the way that the zipper is sewn onto the bag is it's top stitched down. And so my sample that I made with the cats, I actually sewed that zipper right sides together at a quarter inch seam allowance and then turned it and then top stitched it. Whereas in the instructions, what you're supposed to do, oh no, I was going to do this, is um, iron along this edge here and then you lay your zipper underneath and just top stitch it down. Um, but I feel like that that, um, it, it would be easier just to sew and turn it, you know, it's more accurate. But this, obviously we want to see this, so um, I'm going to top stitch it down from through the top all the way. So let's see, could I just go like this? I'm going to try this. I haven't thought this through, so sorry I'm winging it right in front of you. Where's my, I don't want to sew through that uh, zipper stop. That would be bad. <laughs> Break my needle. Now, if I had probably thought this through better, I would have, oh, and this is kind of, this might bug me. Um, I would have sewn and turned this. In fact, I might try that still. So it doesn't look like that. It, that that's not clean enough for me. <laughs> I know I say I'm not a perfectionist, but certain things when I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I can do better. It's almost more like, can I do better? I want to know. Can I do that? Is that possible? I let, really like learning things. Every situation is a little bit different. But, you know, you learn something every time. And then someday you start ruling out things you probably, you know, probably won't work. So let's see, I feel like, I'm gonna turn it back the other way. I'm gonna do it from this side because there's a back stitch on that seam right there. Um, Cause if I did it from the side, I just cut, even though it's open, like this little hook, I would probably pull apart the seam I don't need this much length, I know that. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna use my loop turner for this too. So Malin, if, uh, if you didn't catch it at the beginning, I'm just trying to make my, my little decorative zipper here a little bit longer. All right, here we go. Here's my zipper stop, so I'm staying. I don't wanna lose too much zipper. Okay, I like that better. I know it doesn't look much difference, but sometimes less top stitching makes things look more polished. So that's what I'm going for. This is the back stitch side. That's the back stitch side. So that's the side I'm gonna hook with my loop turner. The top of the zipper is a little trickier because this isn't one of the ones that I spooled off of my zipper by the yard. Um, which, you know, when I use those, the zipper is closed above and below the zipper head. And that does make it easier to deal with the zipper because it's completely closed there and the right width, right? So that is really nice and convenient. So let's see, I'm going to pull this down a little bit. We're not even sewing the bag yet. <laughs> but I thought if I did all this off camera, you'd be suspicious of me. <laughs> so I thought, okay. Uh, I, the last thing I, like, like one of my pet peeves is when someone says, well, that's easy for you. And 
I just feel like I could go on and on about why that I don't really like that, but um, it does really bug me. Um, it is easy for me sometimes, but I also have put the time in, so it disrespects the fact that I have worked really hard for my skills. And so, so when someone says that, I'm like, well, yeah, but it wasn't always, and it isn't every day easy for me. Like, truly, I'm, lear I'm like constantly making mistakes because I'm willing to, and I'm willing to learn. All right, so there's the head, the top of my zipper. If my needle gets close to that, that's not so catastrophic as it was at the bottom. What's kind of nice about this tube is that it's holding my zipper together at the top, you know? That's kind of a bonus. Let's put this down in the center. All righty. Gotta be careful, I'm starting to yank out my seam right there. Okay, now we have a longer zipper. Now, let's sew. Okay. Get rid of my zipper, or my things there. Okay, so, unfortunately, I started talking puppies with somebody and I forgot that I needed to iron these things here. So let me iron these. And so this is, the way I'm going to set this up is a little different than the instructions. So the instructions, so here's the, here's the dot kit. So there's a um, duffel bag in this set, uh, the dot kit that I'm making here, and then there's a little flat travel pouch, which I was going to try and squeeze in, but like I said, I was talking puppies. <laughs> so um, I have my book kind of pinned open to where I start the sewing. You do have to interface a lot of the outer pieces. I did not use fus fusible interfacing. Um, my store didn't have it the last time I was there. I haven't been there for a couple weeks. And so I ordered some and it's supposed to arrive yesterday and it hasn't yet. So um, I'm just using, like I do sometimes, just this like poplin that I have here that's washed. And it's just sewing. Cause you know, Fusible interfacing is a, is a relatively new invention. You don't need it. You can use whatever you want. As long as you're using something to kind of give the outer of the bag some body, um, that's really all that counts. You can use two layers of the outer fabric if it's not too heavy, you, you, but you know that's kind of expensive way to go. So I always just recommend using something that you have laying around like, or just getting like a cotton poplin or broadcloth or batiste or something like that that you see at the store that's really affordable. You can use muslin. Just make sure you wash it first, tighten it up, make sure all the shrinkage is out, especially if it's something that's going to be washed. That's my little tip. And this poplin I have here, when I buy spoon flower fabric um, for chicken boots, sometimes we buy a hundred yards on a roll. <laughs> um, and I don't know how it works on their end, but lately, like the last couple of years, when they send us our roll of fabric, there's sometimes there's a few yards that aren't printed on there. And it's probably because the, their roll came, like I maybe I ordered 95 yards and they're like, well, we're practically printing a hundred yard roll. So just, just give them the whole roll rather than cut off the five yards and have to deal with a five yard roll. Maybe it's, it might be hard to put just a five yard roll through their printer. I don't know. I think about these things because I know like we can just we just never know how it works in production until you've seen it you know so I have some of that little bit of poplin laying around and when it's um, unprinted it's just like the perfect little fabric to use as an interfacing so that's what I use so let's see um, so I'm gonna be doing this just a little bit differently than the instructions I, I the instructions are a little bit um, you really need to like look at them read them through because um, I was like, I would miss like a piece or something that, like, oh shoot, I need to go back and add that. So um, I was skimming it, I admit, and their instructions are always really good. They sewed it a little differently than I would, so that's why I wanted to read it through. So the first step would be to iron the long sides on the seam allowance, like that. And then you're gonna lay that on the zipper underneath and just top stitch it down. The way I did my bag over there was I sewed it right sides together, sewed and turned, then top stitched like that. So you can do that. I feel like it's more accurate and easy to sew that way, 
and you don't have to do the pre-ironing step, but if you do that, there's a chance, depending on the width of your zipper, that this assembly, once it has its zipper sewn behind it, could be a little bit wider. So just make sure that you check that and you'll know it right off the bat when you go to sew it to the ends and you can fix it there. It doesn't matter if you have to trim on these edges, just make sure you trim on both of them evenly. So center it onto your square. And I'll, I'll explain this a little better in the next step. So, um, so the, the two things I'm doing differently are that I am going to do this, but I'm going to put my I'm still going to iron this down, but I'm going to put my zipper on top like this and sew it down. It doesn't even look like I need that. See, it's just going to be barely any that shows. What do you guys think? Do you think our fabric's going to work? <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm going to stop thinking about it. Okay, and the other thing I'm going to do differently is I'm going to try and sew this whole bag without any hand sewing. <laughs> and so I have to set it up in this very first step. So if you're following along and you want to sew it the way that Grainline has you do it, um, you might may, you might look at the instructions at the get go because it is a little bit easier. But there's just a lot of hand sewing in the end. So all right, let me just sew these long sides here. Or I mean, iron the seam allowance here. I'm just going to sew that, or iron it, the uh, seam allowance down. And you want to iron the unnotched edge. Hope you can hear me. Hopefully I did that on that one. Yeah, you want the unnotched edge. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, one more. Okay, oh, thanks, Brooke. You told me that last time too, thank you. Um, okay, so the reason you don't wanna do the iron on this, um, notched edge is because that's going to be a sewing guide later on. If you accidentally do iron that edge and sew it in, just all you have to do to get that notch back is fold it in half and notch it there, you know. It's just a sewing guide that will be actually pretty important. I'm not sure if it'll be as important on the lining, but it will be on the other one. All right, so here's our pieces. Now, this is how the instructions would have you do it this way. So it right on top just like that Zoop. Um, because I have this decorative zipper I'm gonna do it on the top and I'm gonna cheat a little bit I'm gonna edge stitch this first right now actually I just thought of something can I still do this I can still do this right you know actually what I'm gonna do I'm gonna sew this is what I want to do. I really want to make this so that I don't have to hand sew, but if it's too tricky, it may not be worth it. Yes, I know how I'm going to do this. That's right. I'm going to do it at, am I going to do it all at once? Sorry, I have to think about this, you guys. Because now it's a personal challenge. So if I sew this down, my problem with this is that um, I really need this lining down here at this edge to be free still. And get rid of these paper pieces right now. Just like that. Okay, so I thought I figured this out. Let's see. I've been sewing in my head since I went to bed last night and then I woke up this morning and I was sewing in my head again. I actually really love these kinds of issues. Um, I uh, would probably have made a different, like it, it, this is possible to do this 
Um, I'm just doing it in conjunction with someone else's pattern. So the pattern, you know, you can design a pattern lots of different ways. And um, you would have been set up a little bit differently if you intended for it to be fully lined from the get-go with no hand sewing like you would do in a factory. That's kind of why I think that way. I feel like gift making is so much more pleasurable if you can make lots of gifts for lots of people um if you're if that's your aim and without it taking you too long making one gift for one person is awesome um but if you're just like i want to make everybody bathroom bags this year it would be really nice if you don't want the stress of worrying if you're gonna finish if you like hand sewing though and you want to sit in front of the tv hand sewing i would totally do that i, I actually really love doing stuff like that too so it doesn't take away from it so let's see i think I'm just going to sew this down first and think about it. And then, yeah, actually, I have an idea. I have an idea. I'm going to sew this at a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to have to change my thread soon, too, for that, that zipper top stitch. Alrighty, so now I think I can top stitch this down and leave the lining free. <laughs> but it's still not free down here, so that actually didn't work. Let me think about this. I feel like I figured it out. Oh. Oh, I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. That's what it is. Okay. Don't try this at home. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, I actually went and looked through all the videos to make sure that I don't wear this shirt every time I'm with you guys. Um, I just really love it. I love the color of it. Um, I need more like warm, like warmer tops right now. And um, mostly what I have are like hand knit sweaters like I have a ton of those and I I love wearing them but I would be too warm streaming and wearing one way hand knits like I did that last week I was so hot <laughs> and it's just because I'm like you know nervous a little nervous energy and all that so okay so I think what it is is that I um this is what it is I think I think I sew all this together first this is how I'm gonna do it I hope you truly do enjoy watching me figure this stuff out, you guys, and you're not like, boring, and get on with it, lady. I just want to make a dot bag. If you want, I can make the, I'll make the second one I'm making the way they tell you. How's that? I will take one for the team and do so hand sewing on another one of these. Because <laughs> I really love you guys, and I really want to enable you. All right, so this is my plan. I'm gonna sew this as a whole assembly. I'm just looking for the notches because I know I need those later on. So is anyone sewing today? What are you guys working on? I need to, I think I'm gonna go to the fabric store today. I've been uh, procrastinating doing it for too long because I do have some gift sewing I want to do this year. I kind of wish, you know, I'm going to take out the stitching right here. This kind of like bit me in the butt on my other one on the line. I could see it. So I'm just going to get rid of that. that. It makes you feel, what makes you feel human? <laughs> that I make mistakes or that I'm figuring things out? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to leave that. I might top stitch that in a second. I'm going to get rid of this thread, though. Now I'm going to do the same with the lining. Aren't those fabrics so pretty? <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad, Carol. I mean, I think that's... 
I feel like it's mostly what I do. I just sit here and figure things out. If there was a paid job, and there actually is, <laughs> I've had it many times, I, you know, pattern drafters, that's what they do, but I would love to just sit and figure things out. I miss doing that. Free license to do it. When I worked at one place, I'll tell you the difference between working in the garment industry. <laughs> Thanks, Brick. Oh, a strata top. Oh, slippery rayon crepe. I'm sorry, Melon. <laughs> I I know that pattern company. I've been checking their stuff out, but I don't I'm not, I don't know all the names of their stuff yet, so I'm gonna look it up. So like the when I worked at um, in the garment industry, it's it's very fast paced. Um, and it can be in the, it is in the outerwear company uh, industry as well, but it's a little different. Um, the seasons are different. And um, in the garment industry, like I worked mostly doing children's clothing. Ooh, you reorganize. Oh, oh, nice. I just realized I have a, a empty filing cabinet in my garage. I'm going to use it for all my patterns here. So, um, it was really fast paced because you had, we had, um, four seasons a year. We had spring and fall, which are the biggest ones. And then a small summer and a small holiday, holiday meaning winter. Lots of pins. Yeah, I bet. It's a woven tee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I feel like I have seen the strata top, but does, does it have an armhole seam or is it just like one piece to the arm, to the sleeve? Um, and then when I, I kind of left the garment industry, I was kind of like, I just, like the, the pollution, the people, it was just like living in LA. It was just like, I just didn't want to support it, honestly. Um, I really liked some of the people I worked with and stuff. I really liked the work, uh, but it just wasn't quite for me. I'm going to press this. And so then I decided that I really loved being on this one farm and I worked, went and worked on a farm. And then I came back and um, worked in the garment industry again to get like debt free of all my student loans. And then um, I ended up deciding to move somewhere where I could, could just like go back to school and learn environmental engineering. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, Melin. Oh, okay, well that's good. I mean, that cuts out the armhole, you know, thing with that slippery fabric on. <laughs> and so I was working at a fabric store, and I think I've told you guys this before. I was working at a fabric store, and um, I'll see now. I'm going to have to, like, slip this under like that, I think. Okay, now this is not working out. Wait a minute. I may have to, like... And my zipper's not wide enough. Okay, but that I can fix by just making this a little bit bigger. So this, I was working at this fabric store and um, I told the gal, just don't tell anybody what I do because someone will very really ask me to make things for them and I, I just was kind of done with it. And I just knew um, being a pattern drafter, someone always wants you to make them something. And um, and some people think I owe it to them because I have that skill. They're like, well, if you know how to do this, you should do this for me. And it's, it doesn't really work that way. Um, and <clears throat> I still get that to this day. I get it often, honestly. And I told her not to tell anyone, and that, but she did. She told this local outdoor company. She's like, you'll never believe who I have working for me. And um, I have this great pattern drafter. She's worked in the garment industry. And she was bragging to them and they stopped in and offered me a job. <laughs> and I was kind of intrigued because they did computer aided design. And I was kind of like, well, I never got to learn computer aided drafting. And even though I don't really want to go back in the industry, it would be really smart for me to learn this just in case as a backup. You know, I was using my career as a backup, you know. Ooh, you finished a pair of trousers with your first elastic waistband and a welt pocket. Wait, the well pocket? Dang, that's awesome. That's awesome, Ida. I saw the new pants in Seamwork today. I thought they're kind of cute. The little like 
pull on um, trousers. Those are really cute. And so I did go and work for that company and they really like changed my mind about how I felt about the garment industry. And, um, oh, this is how I oh, look at that. Like taking out that seam was actually really smart. Okay. Now I can just kind of top stitch this on like that. Okay. All right. So let's, um, how much do I need here? So then I worked at the, this outerwear company and I learned really quickly that their, um, timeline they had one season a year one season a year and i got to work nine months on my patterns nine months not not one month on an entire season it was so luxurious and awesome and i got to really nerd out on it and i learned a lot it was just really cool so and then i went to work for a fitness apparel company like you know like triathlete gear and running and stuff like that and I was, suddenly went from doing like nine to 15 patterns a year that probably had like 80 pattern pieces each to doing two to 300 every two months. It was intense. <laughs> yeah, right, Brooke? I was thinking that too. You know, I actually think they could be a really nice pajama pant. <laughs> what, are they, what are they called again? Um, I want to say Sasha, but that's that, that's the, um, pants that I just bought from Closet Case. Yeah, heavy linen and straight, they would be really comfy at a show, don't you think, Brooke? I think that those would travel nicely, maybe not in a linen, but, um, I'm just taking out this seam, you guys. I am sorting things out right in front of your eyes. <laughs> okay. So now I've freed up my seam allowances there. I'm just going to make it half what it needs to be because my zipper is so narrow, you know. <laughs> okay. This is kind of the seam allowance I used on my first one. But um, I ended up having to trim mine down because it made mine wider. This isn't going to make it wider. You don't realize zippers come in different widths until you get one that's the wrong width. A little trickier. It really wants to go to that original spot that I ironed. And it's hot. Okay. I may have to pre-sew it to make it stay. This one might do a little better. Let's see. I'm going to iron away the fold on this one. Almost there. The lining's way easier. Okay. Oh, you guys wrote a bunch of stuff. Let me see here. Yeah, me too, Brooke. It looks like the the Cali shirt that way. I really love uh, those kinds of tunics where the button placket stops right here. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Just reading up all your things here. Oh, that's so smart, Ida. Yeah, I recommend practicing too. You guys see what happens when I don't. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. I am, um, this is not for the faint at heart, I admit. This one, I think I'm going to sew down. But the other one I'm not going to quite yet. Mm. 
the lengths I'll go not to hand sew. I could have hand sewed it by now. I know that's what you guys are shouting at me. Someone is. They're like, geez, lady, you could have just hand sewed it by now. But if I figure this out, then all my others will go together faster. And now I'm just kind of curious. What are the limitations? That's always my question. What are the limitations? Okay. And so Rebecca, stop it. That looks pretty good in theory, right? I'm getting a tickle. I hate tickles. <laughs> All right, time to get the pins out. So Maria, are you still here, Maria? You sew a ton of boxy bags. Maria's an amazing seamstress, you guys. And she sells boxy bags. Like it's one of her main thing she sews. What's What stiffener do you use? You use something softer. Um, it's probably a little easier to deal with than the stuff I use. Because this one doesn't call for any. It just calls for interfacing. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Bound to happen, right? <laughs> okay I'm gonna just hand I'm just gonna pin a few here and there Actually, maybe I'll pin like this towards the zipper because I'm gonna I'm gonna have to sew it from the other side I would actually pre-sew this and then set the zipper on top, except the zipper has to slip into that seam kind of craftily. And um, on the next one, I will sew it normal. I won't do all these um, hoop jumping, okay? I promise. Now that I know <clears throat> I can be clever <laughs> and outsmart it, but I haven't yet. I haven't finished the bag yet, right? <laughs> yeah, right, Ida? I know. Sometimes you can really get the result you want by hand sewing it because you don't have to be so um, precise with the setup, you know? Ta-da. Okay. Make sure I get this centered so I don't fall off the edge. I can see my lining right there though, through the lace. Wouldn't be such a bad thing if I stitched part of it down. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just stitch it like this. And then I can get rid of all my pins. I'll just peel back this little edge here. I'm such a wimp. I'm so lazy. Here we go. Okay. 
This would have been a lot easier to figure out if I hadn't picked this particular zipper. That is partly what the issue is. But I'm determined to use the zipper too. All right, let's get rid of these pins. So I was gonna tell you guys, anytime that you, you make something and you feel like um, it like in any way you were inspired by your you know your peers here in the stream or being a part of the stream or anything, um, make sure you hashtag it. I really wanna see it on Instagram. I really wanna see all the things you guys are up to because I see some of the things you're making and they're they're amazing and I just love that you guys are so yeah, that's awesome, Brooke. Oh, I love that one too, Rebecca. And did you see that it's a vest? <laughs> I mean, I started going, ooh, now I want a quilted vest. Darn everybody and their clever ideas making me want to do more and more. I saw someone's post recently about just kind of feeling overwhelmed when they go on Instagram and just not feeling like, you know, they just felt less than because of everybody else's great stuff. And I, that's so, that's a bummer, you know, because I kind of like, in a way, sometimes when I can't be creative, I go to it to feel like, oh good, there's still creative things happening in the world and people are doing stuff and this is all going to be here when I get back. And, you know, like, it reminds me of something my mom said um, when I first had a child. You know, um, I really missed lazing in bed. Because <laughs> especially then, I was like a get up, like, I would laze in bed. And then once I was up, man, I was going all day. I do not, I don't rest, I don't sit down. Like when I first started dating my husband, he would actually fall asleep and like, a chair on the weekend to relax and I, I would just stare at him like I don't understand but it's the weekend we can do all these amazing things we can get all this stuff done and he's like no <laughs> I want to relax <laughs> and I, I've just never been built like that and I've learned I've really learned to like relax over the years this looks good now um and I was t I was kind of complaining a little bit to my mom like I was like I just really miss like being able to get up when I want to get up and just kind of lazing in bed and kind of reading a book or whatever like it, there weren't really cell phones and weren't worth what they are now then you know um, and you know she said something that really stuck with me she said you know I just want you to know when you get to do that again it's gonna feel just as good as it did before so you're not missing anything like when you get to do that again, it's going to feel just as good. And that actually got me through. I was like, and it did. Like, when I got back to doing that, I was like, oh, yeah, it still feels good. I, I, I still have it. Like, it's still there, you know. And I feel like that's what I want to say to the person that feels that way when they look at everybody else being creative. Those people aren't, like, 24-7 sitting there cutting things out, sewing them, and being clever and creative. You guys know that, right? I mean, we all are making these mistakes all the time. So... All right, so I need to change my thread color. I feel that way. I feel like, oh, I wouldn't mind being back to having, you know, someone here that would cut my things out and I could just sit here and cut and sew and be creative and everything. But the thing is, I have to spend like, you know, 70% of my time on the computer creating thumbnails and tagging things and I'm still like way behind, you know? And um, that's what it takes. Just kind of how it is. That is part of it. Ooh, this thread is very thin. Okay, here we go. I'm going to sew across, I'm gonna sew across this bottom with this thread color even though I probably should have just sewed it in the cream before I changed the thread. <laughs> Am I going to do that? Let's see. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do my sneaky little slip in here thing right now. First. Okay. 
I'm gonna make sure I don't need to back tack, it'll get enclosed in the seam. And I really wanted to be accurate. Sometimes when you go back, do a back tack, it kind of throws you off. All right. My darn bobbin thread, because I didn't sew a little bit first. Well, there's one good reason to use this fabric. It kind of matches the lining, <laughs> or it does match the lining. Get this nice and flat. All right. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It looks a little home sew on the inside. Oh yeah, I think I saw that too, Malin. When I was looking at hashtags, um, if you look at the hashtags, it just, God, there's some really inspiring ones. Um, and it was the one that like, that had the um, lining where it looked like um, hills. And then she stitched all the hills. That's what gave me the idea for my birds. Because I wanted to do that, and I was like, I don't have any hills. <laughs> and I went, wait, I don't have to do exactly what she did. I don't have to copy her, you know. Don't panic that I don't have any hills. I had birds. The only other motif fabrics I had were really small. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that. Those birds took me a little while. Probably took me like four hours to stitch those. All right, so now all of my lining pieces, edges here are free. That's the key in being able to, um, yeah, you saw that one too, Malin? I know, it's cute, huh? Like so simple, like you would just overlook that hill fabric until you see it like that. And I, I remember when that hill fabric came out because um, I bought it for in a different colorway for something else. It was a long time ago, um, in the fabric world at least. Okay, this is a little funny right here. I'm gonna pop this stitch right here and get that back in there. Just checking it out. I'm gonna edge stitch this. It's a little, un it's not straight anymore for some reason. Do you see that? Dag. Guess I'll have to figure that out. Um, I, I, I don't think it was cotton steel. I think it was cloud nine. I'm pretty sure. I, I remember, I'm trying to remember what it went with that I used it for. It was before cotton and steel. It was a while ago. I don't even think I was in, uh, living here. I think I was in Humboldt County still. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. I feel like my alignment is a little bit off. I think I can handle it. All right, there's my top assembly. Finally, I could have made the whole bag in the time it took me to do that. <laughs> so next time I will hand sew, I promise. I've learned my lesson. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so um, that was the first two steps, 26 and 27 there. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this book is 
I will tell you that the pattern is designed as if you are sewing all three of these things. So the yardage is included, includes all three projects. And so um, I've been trying to write down what it took to do mine and the lining took 12 inches. The interfacing was about that. Um, and actually the interfacing would be more than that because usually interfacing is a single layer and the I based that on 44 inch wide fabric for the lining. The self wouldn't take much more than that. I think a half yard is what I determined was a half yard. So I'm going to write that down. So that I know that if I only want to make the dop kit and if you want to as well, I meant to say this at the beginning so someone tuning in might get that. So we start on page like 19 for the sewing instructions with like step probably 25, no 26, that's how you start it. Um, and then you're going to set this aside and you're going to sew the front. with the, pop, the zipper. And here's yet, so you need pieces 10 and 12. I'm gonna set these on my over here. And you do the same thing with this funny way they like to sew the zipper where they fold it and then top stitch it down. I'm kind of, it's kind of interesting me, to me. See how much wider this zipper is? It's a full quarter inch wider. This is more of a typical zipper width, but it was a little narrow for that. All right. I like my zippers going uh, right to left when I'm facing it. And I made mine a little long, so this time I don't have to like get right up to the edge. And then you top stitch it down. It's kind of funny. It looks like they do it from the back side. I'm going to do mine from the front side only because I like my top stitching better than my bottom stitching, meaning I like my top side of my stitching better than my bobbin. Especially on the Spoonflower printed canvas. The canvas is pretty unforgiving uh, with the ink sitting on top because it's not like a typical printing. It's come a long way, but... Um, it it can leave holes as you probably saw when I pulled out that stitching there you know what I mean I feel like I got that really close to the edge but it feels really secure a little crooked though why is it so crooked maybe my fold oops <laughs> All right, and then you fold and press down this edge too, like this. Just like that. So I make sure you line up these edges here. I don't use a zipper foot, so um, my edge is probably a little different than where yours would be. My zipper foot's just not ideal for stuff like this. It would uh, make my stitching look wobbly. So I, I would much rather have the, the full contact of a pr regular presser foot on the fabric and just deal with the distance. So there you go makes you look like a genius, right? I'm gonna um, sew across the ends so that I don't accidentally pull my slider off of my zipper, because I can, I can do that with mine. <laughs> and I hadn't stitched them down. 
There we go. And then I put this behind it. Don't forget, this is what I forgot to do on my other one. Wait, that might not be it. It looks a little short. Why does that look short? Hmm. Oh, I know why it looks short. It's not short. It's because this got longer. That's what it is. So uh, this is one way place you could have saved on your outer fabric because you could use lining or anything else that you want on the inside of the pocket. Um, the only time you're going to see it is when you open it up. And I do sometimes think it's nice to have a contrast. So bear that in mind. Um, oh, here's my other tip. I really wish I would have said this at the beginning, but puppies, you know, we were talking about puppies, me and Brooke, you know, cause I'm getting a puppy. <laughs> and um, I wanted to say that the grain line of all these pattern pieces goes this way. So, the reason that this I'm saying this is really important. Um, if you have a print like my cat bag here, if I had cut this using the grain line, the cats would be like this. So that's something to think about. Um, and because uh, if you are just one of those people that you're just like, I have to follow the directions, I have to follow the way the layout is of the pattern pieces, the bag is going to still be really adorable. It, you're just got to realize that it's going to be right side up when you hold it like this rather than when it's sitting down, you know, like, like this. My fabric goes either way, but still. Um, if you want it to look really cute from the side like that, just be wary, wary that all of the um, grain lines go the other direction. So my yardage that I just gave you is based on it going the other way. So the, ba the way I am cutting, I cut and sew it here. It's a little pug, Rebecca. <laughs> it's a little pug. I, I will admit I've never been a fan of pugs, um, but uh, my chiropractor has one and he, I remember when he got it, he, he was like, oh, my wife and daughter's got a pug and I'm just not a big fan of pugs. And so I asked him a few weeks later, I'm like, so how's it going with the pug? He's like, I, I gotta admit something, like they're just the most amazing dogs. They're like, personality is so great. And they're just really awesome. And I'm, I'm a changed guy. And so, and then when she showed me that these dogs she's fostering, I was just like, I couldn't stop thinking about it. It's so terrible. I'm usually the one in my house that's like, no, no animals, because I have a lot of, we have a dog and two cats, and I love them, and I don't want anything to take away from them. Like, I, I'm a really good pet owner, and I just really like to make sure that everybody's harmonious, all of my pets always get along really well, and, um, and I like it that way, and it's not easy to have that happen, and we're really lucky that all of our pets get along really well. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, do you have a pug as well, Rebecca? You have, oh, your dog likes other small dogs. And see, I have a dog who's kind of a, a medium-sized chunk. And um, she's pretty playful still. She's probably only like five or six. And so I think that this will be good for her too. She's really enjoyed having my mom's dog around um, who's two years old and a big a big dog and a puppy. So, okay, we're going to set that aside. What's next? Oh, we're going to do the back of it. I'm going to set my lining pieces aside for that. So you could get away with not having this seam on the back of your bag by cutting two of this piece here, number nine, because right now you only cut one fabric, two lining, one interfacing, and that one fabric's the one that goes behind the pocket assembly. But you could cut two of those and then uh, one less of, like not cut these pieces here, because all this is is the back side of the bag and uh, the seam is really great in that it like lines up with this. So it just kind of mimics the other side. So it's just one more step. Yeah, Maria, you love your pug. I never was a fan of the like snorfling sounds that animals like that make. 
Um, but my dog, <laughs> she's got a, she's got short snout, short snout syndrome too. She looks, she's a lot like a Shiba Inu. If you know what a Shiba Inu is, my dog looks like a little fox, but she's a little bit sausagey. And that is not my fault. Like people think, oh my God, your dog. I'm pretty sure it's because she lived rough for so long and she was so thin when we got her that um, my mom calls it a uh, foster child syndrome where that she's just like, like she's just never going to be thin. Just, just like she's going to carry extra weight and she hardly eats anything. Like she doesn't overeat. She is on a, you know, eats diet food. We feed her like raw food for one meal like she's she's eating really well um but she's eating the like just below the minimal amount because she doesn't exercise a ton she doesn't really like it and um so that's all that piece is it's just stitched together and then that's the back of the bag i feel like all i'm talking about is me and not this <laughs> the sewing. i should talk about the sewing <laughs> aww awesome AK Press, I don't know what AK Press is. Alaska Press? Is that what that's short for? Okay, to create the strap. Okay, we're doing the strap. Here's the strap. Kind of toyed with the idea of doing a different strap, but um, I didn't really come up with anything I really liked. So it's gonna be the self fabric. I like looked around for some twill and some binding and stuff like that and um, I feel like this is one thing I would interface the strap piece it doesn't call for that or use something inside to make it sturdier because I did you notice that my strap looks a little it's a little wiggly on one side and it's just a little floppy so I think it would give it a more polished look if you um, use an interfacing I'm going to iron this open right now and then I'm going to turn it right side out. I didn't do that on that one and it, it just caused me problems. <laughs> I'm not going to trim the seam allowances or grade them because I actually want that to fill up the whole strap. So in the instructions, it does say to grade the seam allowances, and by that they, oh, Anarchy Press, okay. Um, by grade the seam allowances, they mean um, press it to one side, trim one of them smaller so that they're kind of stepped, so that they're not too bulky. I like the seam allowance to fill up the strap because when I'm edge stitching it, my presser foot's less likely to fall off of the edge while I'm doing it, and it did that a few times on that one, and I had a lot of trouble with it. Um, it it just needs that kind of purchase. All right, this is gonna be this is gonna be hard to turn right side out though. I will admit, I may have to like take it out and then just edge stitch it. This is pretty stiff. Done worse though, and it's not for a very sh long distance. So yeah, we were talking about getting a cat because there was um, some rescued cats from the fire, but. I love, I love cats. I will admit I'm more of a cat person, but the thing is like cats getting along is trickier sometimes than dogs. And I don't want to upset the balance with my two cats. I adore them and they, they are, they get along pretty good with each other. They don't fight or anything like that. One of them likes to chase the other one around occasionally and he's like, eh, leave me alone. But, um, for the most part, they will hang out right next to each other and you know, the one that chases the big one around, um, he will defer to him when it's food time. So at least he knows his place in some ways, you know. Okay. Eh, this might not work. This might be a little too much for this. But I did it when I did my, my making backpack, right? So... I'm just going to... I'm going to make it the other way just from the outside. And now you'll see what I mean by the, um, this canvas is a little less forgiving when I take the stitches out. See, that's what was happening with the loop turner. I just kind of know the combination of things that kind of 
kind of push it to its limit sometimes, you know, so. Just means I have to have the seam on the side. There's nothing wrong with that. Just a different thing. I'm gonna iron this though and try and get rid of some of these holes. My iron needs more water. Okay, so this is this is me getting rid of the holes. <laughs> I feel like this is sometimes so, uh, so works so good, so worth doing. Kind of pressing out those needle holes from the back since the needle went in from the top, you know what I mean? Actually on this side they went in from this way. But see like that, like that's not like my thread, that's actually the can't like that's that's what happens with the needle. I have a pretty big needle, so it's a little compromised there. But what I can do is just make my seam allowance a tiny bit bigger and then encase that in there. I know my friend Kirby isn't here because she'd go crazy if she knew I got, I'm getting a pug. I'm trying to keep it a secret from her. <laughs> I don't want to surprise her. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to do, Maria. I'm just going to top stitch it closed right now. And then do the other side. And then I'll just put it seam side down on the bag. I just don't want this to get twisted. So I'm going to hold it pretty tight. This is when torquing happens and we say no to torquing around here. It wants to torque. It's trying. So I'm pushing my top layer that way so it doesn't get longer because that's when that happens. And now I'm going to top stitch it again, but I'm going to go from this end to this end again. So, because if I started from this end, that would be the natural thing to flip it and go from this way. I could end up getting this little sideways torque thing. So I'm going to um, go from the same side I started. This strap actually looks better than my other one. And a little easier to sew when you can get, when you don't have to turn it like that. All right, so there's our strap. And um, I'm gonna attach this right now because I forgot to do that on my other bag. I'm gonna do it at the zipper pull end. Pretty sure. It lines up. I'm gonna line it up there. Let's see, look at that. That might be threads. I hope this is threads right here. It's not. See, that's not threads. It's gotta be threads. What is that? Yeah, I don't know if you could see that. But I think it is like my canvas holes. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna line it up with this seam. I hope that's the right spot. Let's see. Sandwich the strap between the two layers of the top edge of the strap aligned with the front panel seam. Oh, the front panel seam. But the front panel seam's not there yet. Oh yeah, that's the same seam, okay. What do you mean? Okay. Well, I got my wish. This strap is definitely stiffer than my other one. It looks good though. Only a couple more steps, you guys. But then we'll, we will do the lining. So now I have the, um, it's gonna get my bottom ready. Oop, 
bottom. Okay. So uh, the things that you, before you start doing this one, you really want to make sure you have your center notch here and your center notch here and your center notch here. See it? I didn't notch the interfacing. There's no point to that. Um, and uh, this is how it's going to go like this. So I'm going to start on this side like this. Now, um, this is where bag making is, I think, really tricky for people and why they ask me to do bag making things because doing the three-dimensional thing is uh, where it gets confusing because if your seams are um, at any point inaccurate because of cutting or sewing or doing crazy modifications like mine, this is when it gets kind of kooky because those last couple steps is when you're like, oh, please let it all line up and become a box that's not askew, you know? And... Um, that was my hardest thing to figure out with all of our bags. Like, hands down, over binding, stiffener, all of it, you guys. Figuring out my bag, how to correct it as I was going, if I saw that it was going to be a little bit off. Because it's usually counter to what you think you need to do. You need to keep one leg longer or do go into the seam allowance on the other side and then it correct. you can correct it, right? because you don't want the bag to go, you know, like that. So um, one of the things you can do to set yourself up for success is to start in the middle and go around and then do the other side. And you can start in the middle and go down or start from the top and go up. And then that way, you know, you're doing the exact same thing to both sides. And that kind of sets yourself up for success. Now, yeah, there's other ways you can do this. But um, Honestly, like I like the things where I can still listen to an audiobook and I don't have to sit there and agonize over it. So I just do the guaranteed method sometimes. And because even if it's like one minute longer to do it some way, it might be 15 minutes shorter because <laughs> I didn't make any kind of catastrophic mistakes, right? So this being sewn at a half inch seam allowance, it's going to be a little bit more finicky to attach because you don't have as much maneuverability, but you can like clip into some of these spots to help that once it's sewn. I totally recommend sewing from the curve side, um, but you can do either. So you're just going to ooch around like this. You can see the bag's going to start pulling over here because it's starting to create that three-dimensional shape. But maintaining your seam allowance is really important here and the hardest part. I want my strap to be straight. I don't know why, but my stitching is making it, or it's, it's kind of pulling up. There's a lot of thickness here because of the pocket on the other side. I don't want to pull. I just want to set it down on the seam line. It's a lot of layers, see? So I have, um, oh, but I want to keep this, I want to keep this free. Sorry guys, I need to keep this side free. After all my little speech, I do need to keep my lining side free because I'm trying to make it without um, the sewing, hand sewing. So let me just pull that out and do it one more time. Now I'm going to have to make sure I'm accurate because of the stitching holes. That's a bummer. But I can always go back and stitch where I need to. Yeah, I, I like when I was trying to figure out the pocket bucket and the project bag on the ends. And it's funny because um, uh, that's the, like when people say, hey, will you ever release a sewing pattern for it? for an, an item, it's always, most of the time, uh, it's, they're asking for the pocket bucket. And um, to be honest, it's not easy to sew that thing. So um, I feel like it would be more <laughs> frustrating than it's worth for people to try it out. Why did I top stitch all this down here? <laughs> I need it to be free. It's easy to forget what your plans are sometimes. 
Didn't I, did I top stitch through? Oh, you guys. Yeah, remember I top stitched through this too. This is, I want that emoji face. I just want it to appear right above me right now. The one that's like that, you know. Hoy. Okay, I'm just gonna pull out a little bit of my top stitching so that I remember I need to finish it later. Or I'm going to take it out and then do it separate. Eek! <laughs> I know someone out there is laughing at me. Should have just hand sewed it, lady. Well, I didn't want to. I was determined. Oh, my strap just came off. Okay. Okay. I can leave that right there. And then I'm going to retop this just right now to stabilize it. I could actually do this top stitching once the bag's completely sewn. That's what I'm gonna do. Then it won't be an issue. Once it's sewn, it's fine. It'll be tricky to get in there, but that's, that's no problem. We can do that. It's near the zipper opening, so that makes it a little easy. Okay, but I am gonna pin it so I don't forget. <laughs> I don't wanna do that dope. There we go. There's one. What did I do over here? Let's take out this top stitching. The lining has to be free on all sides. There we go. A little easier to go like this. I can't believe today's December 1st. <laughs> oh, Rebecca. <laughs> Hands, if you were caught in a factory hand sewing, Rebecca, you'd be fired on the spot. There was no forgiveness. So if you were caught with a seam ripper, fired. Seam ripper and um, hand sewing. And possibly food. <laughs> They're not that bad uh, in most places now. I can't vouch for most factories. Most factories are still that brutal, um, even in our own country. Every time I catch something be between my knees like that, I always think of Tom Sawyer. <laughs> do, you, do you remember that part in the book? Or is it like Huck Finn who's like posing as a little girl and the... Um, the woman's looking for him. I can't remember all the people in that. And he's dressed like a little girl. She's on to him. And so and to prove that he's a, a boy, she drops something, you know, like an, like an apple. And he puts his knees together to catch it where a girl would have spread her knees to catch it with her skirt. I'm like, oh, dang, I, I would have failed that. What do you mean what, Rebecca? Are you shocked by the hand sewing? Yeah, it was beaten out of me as a pattern drafter. There was no way I could make anything that required any hand sewing. And uh, if, if people were ever caught doing that on the floor, they would be fired. In a heartbeat. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. All right, so... Cue the music and my inspiring speech about putting your bag together in a three-dimensional shape again. I'm going to pull my lining out of the way. <laughs> well,
Well, if you would have had a good teacher in the factory, they would have trained you well, and that wouldn't have happened. But yeah, let's. That is, um, it, you know, and if their piece rate, they just couldn't get away with that. Like they wouldn't make any money. And pe people are under the impression that people make the piece rate can go as slow or as fast as they want, but it's not the case. They would also be let go if they weren't making piece rate because there are laws that protect piece rate workers. They do need to be making a certain amount, but the factory also needs them to be a certain bit productive. They don't want people that aren't going to make better than rate. They really want them to be really productive. So, yeah. If you're hand sewing because you're trying to fudge something, I have I've seen it once, you know, and it wasn't it wasn't pretty. The sewing floor soap supervisor. She was a really amazing woman. She really cared for those people, but who boy, I was. I was so afraid of her. You know, I was like 20 years old. And um, I was terrified of her. Her name's Josephine. I still remember her. <laughs> and uh, over the years, I, I really became, like, I really looked up to her and I really liked her. But she really put me through my paces. I was a young, upstart, young woman, she thought, um, who assumed that I thought I knew everything in the world. Where's my strap? Obviously, I don't know anything because I know, don't know my bag needs a strap. And it needs to go to this side. So let's pin this over here. And, um, you know, like I was hired to spell someone for maternity leave. So that's also like they're thinking, oh, she's temporary. We can mistreat her. Um, we don't want her to take over someone's job. And that's what happened. I was really glad to stay. But the other gal who had had a baby lost her job. Or maybe she decided not to go back to work. I can't remember. I think she wanted her job back. I was so young and naive. I didn't know what was happening. All right, that all worked nice and smooth, no wrinkles. So now I'm going to clip this right away so that it releases. And then I'm gonna trim it a little bit, not too much. I like something to be able to top stitch down. On. I'm going to put this in before I trim this one so that it doesn't get squirrely. My next bag's going to be faster, I promise. <laughs> Will I even have time to do another one? <laughs> How long have we been doing this? An hour and a half? Oh my gosh. We'll see if I make the other one, you guys. I don't know if you're going to sit through that. I looked at another space for rent um, the other day. Remember when I left here? I, I went and looked at it, and um, it's looking possible. I have to do a bit of work to it, but it does have some cool features to it. I think you guys will find interesting if they show up in the camera. That's the right spot, correct? Ooh, that is so thick. Can you hear it? Can you hear my machine? Like, thunk, thunk. This canvas that I'm using from Spoonflower is the uh, linen cotton canvas. So it, it definitely has some really heft, big heft to it. Okay. Let's top stitch this down. All right, let me trim that other corner. This is way more work that you need to put into a boxy bag too. All these like seams and 
and then we're going to top stitch it as well. Oh, can you hear how stout this fabric is? Pretty stout. If you've ever ordered anything in the yarn print from us, this is the fabric. Same fabric base. It's got a really great texture to it. I really love it. It's just really heavy. It's not really heavy, but it's heavier than what we're used to sewing. We usually do quilting cotton and cotton poplin. Um, so when you couple that with this stiffener, it works, but I've been sewing less and less stiffener, so the heavier weight fabrics are kind of taking the place of the stiffener. All right, so now I'm gonna top stitch this right now. And I'm going to top stitch it on the, the long rectangular piece. So you kind of have to be um, <laughs> uh, pretty tricky about this handle. So I'm gonna start with the handle down here like this when I do it. Yeah, I know, Ida, it's a lot of pieces. And I'm making it look more complicated because I'm doing a few extra things to it. Yeah, Rebecca, my lease is up and um, I can stay here, but I, I would prefer to some, have something different. Um, and something just kind of worked out with someone, which shocked me because I kind of gave up because of the fire. Because I didn't want to end up taking a space that someone else could rent. And then um, I noticed it hadn't rented, so I went and looked at it. And he said, oh, it rented yesterday, but what are you looking for? And so it just kind of came about that way because he's trying to downsize and move in his building and he's gonna rent out part of his building. And it actually is still, it's like an autonomous, almost autonomous space. It's kind of unique. So um, it does have its own address and heating and air conditioning. Um, but I don't have my own restroom or kitchen anymore. And, um, the meter isn't separate, so but that's okay. It's right on the channel, which is kind of cool. And it's really close to my house. The, the channel means it's on a, a creek here, a dry creek most of the time, but sometimes like right now it is flowing. Okay, so you see how I did that? So I started below the handle, like pulling the handle and going around. And then once I got past it, the handle went away. Um, otherwise, if you would have started here without pulling the handle here, you would have had to stop and then pick back up and then keep going because you wouldn't have been able to sew through this handle all the way through. So through the bag. Okay, there's one side. It's really cheerful. Um, let's do the other side and let's make it look easier. Okay, now that I've sewn one, I'm going to take a chance and start from the bottom. Pull my lining out of the way. <laughs> so I'm just making sure I stay on that half inch seam allowance. I have a line on my throat plate that really helps because sometimes it feels counterintuitive what a half inch is. It's really nice to have it right there. And just go, you know, few stitches at a time um, when it's on the curve there it can stretch so you really have to be careful because this piece the straight one with the zipper that doesn't stretch at all so you do have to kind of you know make sure okay here's my mark and here's my mark and I'm a little bit off so I'm going to try and correct that because I don't want my bag to get wonky all right Ida <laughs> sleep well My uh, interfacing is hanging off the edge there a little bit extra. My interfacing grew a little bit because I had uh, 
pre-washed it, but then I didn't iron it before I cut it out. So when I ironed it, it got a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm a little bit down there. That's not a big deal. It's really the least of my issues. Okay, so now we have this other panel. Okay, I'm gonna uh, clip this, trim it. We're gonna attach the bottom and then we're gonna attach the lining. It's gonna go fast now. I'm over all my personal hurdles here. My modifications are not getting in the way now. I need to fix that right there. I don't like that. <laughs> there we go. And trim it. Are you guys interested in the other bags from this set, like the duffel bag? I think someone in stream requested I sew this a while back, but I don't, I don't think I've seen her in a while. Um, so. I'm not sure. I think she wanted the duffel bag. Like after I cut this out yesterday, I was like, well, I think she wanted the duffel bag. Um, okay, where's my strap? Okay, so I, same thing. I need to like pull the strap down like this as I top stitch. They don't really say this in the instructions, I don't think, so it's something to think about. You will get frustrated. Maybe they stitched on the other part of the bag and I'm just doing it in the wrong spot. That is highly likely. Um, I don't think though, I think that would be really tricky to top stitch it with the seam allowance going towards the main body pieces because it wants to push out, not go towards itself. Uh, so it, it probably is the way they recommend it though, the other way, just because, uh, I don't remember them saying anything about doing the strap. They just had a sew along with one of these and it reminded me like, oh yeah, that would be a good thing to sew right now. I know a few people who could use one. I'm really pulling it apart and making sure my seam allowance is pointing towards the uh, piece that I'm top stitching on right now. Try and keep my lining out of the way. I'm hoping I didn't catch any of it. That sounded different. Am I about to run out of bobbin? Let's check. No, something's funny with it though. not that close but um you know one tip for you home machine people every time you take your bobbin out of your bobbin case pull clip the thread and pull it like it would normally feed out of the bobbin this will keep the t the uh, tension of your bobbin and um, stuff better for a lot longer it's the same on my industrial but i do it so much that and I and I I feel like mine stays kind of in tune a little bit better, um, and I have someone regularly check it. All right, I'm just gonna look at this before I go any further and see how it's looking. Make sure there's nothing I want to fix before I kind of immortalize all of it. Looks really cute. I have a few threads right here that are kind of bugging me. I think I can get rid of those later. Um, and I'm gonna see if I can pull any of them out right now. Just in case. You know, like, see that little thread right there? 
That's what's poking to the, the front. <laughs> and those are the things that make your work look like they're not well constructed. I just poke myself. Ow. There we go. Okay, let's put the bottom on. It's right here. Make sure I'm not bleeding. <laughs> the bottom is pretty straightforward, but this is when you really want to make sure you don't get any wonkiness. If you're getting wonkiness, you have to stop. Um, so what I recommend is making sure you have these center notches, center notches, and using the, your guides that way. So you know that um, it's a good opportunity to talk about seam allowance because this the point where this this seams on the corner seam lines up is right here, right? It's like a half inch in, half inch in, and that intersection is right there. And so that is right here, a half inch up right here. That is the corner. So if you stick to the seam allowance, it's no problem. As long as everything else has been going together. Um, I'll just trim off this extra of my lining so it doesn't confuse us when we're sewing it. Because remember it got a little bit bigger when I ironed it. Or maybe I cut one straighter than the other. It's totally possible, knowing me. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with a short section here and I'm going to line it up. I'm going to center it over, right? Because I need a half inch hanging off this seam, each of seam right here. I'm going to line up myself, keep my lining out of the way that I have on here, and I'm just going to start sewing. And when I get to that corner, because I can feel it right there, can you see that? When I get to this corner intersection right there, I'm going to pivot. So I'm going to sink my needle in, I can feel it, and I'm going to pivot. And so what would make this a little easier is if you clipped into your corner down below, not past your seam line, and then pivot like this. See how nice that is? So now I want to make sure that this notch lines up to this notch right here. And look at that, spot on. Half inch seam all the way down. Same thing, this should be hanging off. If Even if it's a little less, it doesn't matter. What's important is where it needs to line up for that corner right now. The corner, keeping those corners in the right spot are gonna make it so that your bag doesn't get wonky. So I'm gonna clip this again so because we that looked really nice when we turned our corner. Can you see it's opening up right there? That helps. And this one's hanging off a little bit more, but that's okay because we're still pivoting at the seam seam line. I'm going to make my little notch. This is kind of like, and this is how they call uh, clipping into the seam, they call it notching in the grain line pattern. It kind of threw me off at first, um, but then I knew what they meant, exactly what they meant when because of where it was at. It was on the curb of the top of the bag. Um, this is kind of like on the closet organizer when I was trying to sew the corner, the, the pockets to the bag and I needed to pivot at those corners. That's what I did. I just kind of clipped up into that seam allowance. So now moment of truth, right? We want to make sure that when we meet here, we don't have any tucks or anything like that. I get nervous about this too. But, you know, if we're still lining up with that seam allowance, shouldn't be a problem. I didn't get to clip that one because it's getting a little tight in there so I'm just going to struggle with it a little bit and straighten it out best I can with my awl like that. And then let's clip it now. So there's our bag bottom. I'm going to clip these corners because that helps make it all relax and then you get a nice crisp corner and a nice square bottom bag like that. 
Okay, now let's do the lining. Um, I don't, I'm not, I don't, did I top stitch this? Oh, I did. I top stitched the bottom of the bag. Okay. Oh, you know, they gave a really good tip on the, on the instructions to open your zipper before you do this. That is good because if you have a locking zipper, you won't be able to get your zipper down from the inside of the bag. So try and remember to do that. So yeah, so they top stitched the bottom of this bag like this. I honestly would rather it go like this. It would be in a way that this is what it wants to do, right? It wants to go like this, but you do this in the um, pattern. I think that still works. You see that? So this is the bottom of the bag. So we'll just stick with that. I never start at a corner for something like this. It just is too tricky. It just starts yourself off in a kind of a frustrating spot. <laughs> so just kind of start somewhere nice and flat so you can kind of get going and get your top stitching legs under you, you know? It's like your sea legs. I'm pulling it apart and making sure the seam allowance is towards the bottom of the bag. And when I get to the corner, it will be a little bit awkward, but not too bad because we clipped our corners. Except that my seam allowance got pushed towards the other way. There we go. Like I say, it wants to push out. That would be its natural inclination. I should look back. I kind of am curious, like, I hope I am top stitching this all the places that they do it. It does, Carol. It'll make it a little less um, floppy in the bottom, um, but it's not imperative you do this. Like on your home machine, I know that it might be a little bit of a struggle to hoik on your um, machine and your needle. Um, I, I know that I, I am really pulling hard. Uh, because I just do that. I have a tendency. I'm a puller. So just so you know that, you don't have to pull as hard as I do. Um, it, it's caused me lots of problems. That is one of my, my little sewing foibles is that I tend to pull everything just as flat as possible and then my seam allowance won't line up. And it, it was really interesting working with uh, Ray Ann because um, she had worked somewhere in a factory making um, essentially stuffed animals. Uh, for a local company that was kind of uh, popular, and they're these collector's items, and uh, they're they're like this time of year they're doing these like handmade stockings, and they made these little stuffed animals, and their seam allowances were eighth of an inch, you guys, eighth of an inch, like that is just not much room to mess around with, and I would always have to get on her. I'm like, you need to use the full seam allowance. That's why this isn't sewing together. I use quarter. Um, and, but that's double that I know it doesn't sound like much, but it's double, you know, so it does really add up. And, um, I learned like her things would line up better because she wasn't a puller. <laughs> she just used the seam allowance and, and put it together. You know, she had her own sewing foibles, which I don't even remember what they were. And it was just kind of funny that we each had our little, our little things, you know? Okay. So let me just throw this lining together really quick we have that's the bottom this is the front and the back I think that's all we have right because everything else is already sewn together so I just need to sew this together half inch seams it'll be a little more forgiving now because it's not such a, uh, I have to be careful not to be a puller right now because it's not heavy duty. It, it, it wants to line up a little better and quilting cotton is, is very stretchy. It's a much more open weave than we realize. So uh, it's gotta, I gotta be careful. The linen cotton canvas is a lot more um, stable that way.
Oh, see, I'm a little off right there. I'm just gonna look, see if I can do something. My seam allowance is pretty good all the way around. I'm kind of curious why that is. Mm. I mean, maybe it's because I did like a little less than a half of an inch. And so that little extra sixteenth of an inch probably creeped up on me. And, and that's why it's not going to match as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take out part of it. And I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. And then that way uh, I probably can make it work. The reason I'm going to make it work on the lining is because you don't really want the lining to be smaller on the inside or bigger, right? It'll just do something weird. We don't want any weirdness at this point. I'm just going to start from, let's see if I can do it. It seems like a lot to match up. Let's see if I can get all that in there. And I'm going to take out a little bit more, see if I can do it. Did I really just pierce that thread? Oh my gosh. I was going to pull it out of the way and then I, I literally pierced it with my needle. Like how, I could never be that accurate if I want to be. So let's see, which one was the longer one? Let's see. I got this. I'm kind of hoping it's the, um, the side with the, just go up or down, down, right? Um, with the curve, that was the shorter side because that side I can stretch. <laughs> it's just a little awkward going from the not curved side of the bag. There you go, I just got that half inch back. One little tuck, oh no, I don't have a tuck, it's a wrinkle. So let's just clip this. I'm not going to top stitch the lining, but I am going to trim this down a little tiny bit just so it doesn't feel like there's a ton of fabric in there. I kind of build this as like a quick gift to make, didn't I? <laughs> you could always skip the outer pocket. Just use the lining pattern piece for uh, the sides, you know. And hand sew this off. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what's going on? Oh, it's okay. It's, I was like, what is going on here? What is going on here? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's pin, man. It's pin. Okay, here we go. I am back stitching with this because when I go to put the bottom on, I know that I might pull on that seam and I don't want it to pull apart. So I know I don't back stitch all the time, but I am on that, on this first. When it's a seam going to another seam, you bet I will. I just got a little tuck. Where's my center? Here's my center. Here's my center. Okay, I need to pull a little bit. That's probably why I had that tuck. Okay. Ow, pin. <clears throat> I don't miss working with pins. They are really pokey. All right, no problem. Clip the curve. I think we have two more things to do. 
almost done. Oh my gosh. There we go. My scissors are kind of dull, can you tell? <laughs> my neighbor told me of a place to go to get them sharpened, and I need to do that. I haven't done it. I completely forgot the name. She told me it, and I was like, well, that sounds kind of familiar. And then I forgot now, so. God, I can't believe it's December 1st. That really snuck up on me. November was a crazy month. My husband got me a Harry Potter advent calendar. So when I saw someone else post on Instagram that they were opening a Harry Potter advent calendar, like they have a sock one, I was like, oh, I can do that too. Oh, actually, I want it to go like this. Okay. So, this is how I'm going to get away. Kathy sharpens. Yeah, but do they do it by hand? Yeah, I'm very picky about that. I'm not a snob about many things, but start sharpening my stuff. I am definitely... I do the traditional way. Stop it. There we go. Okay. So, I probably should have started this like right here, and I'll show you why. Oh, really? That's cute. Yeah, exactly, Rebecca. Yeah, because I had to like discount code that ended yesterday, and I realized it like two days ago, I was like, oh my god. Gosh, that went by really, really fast. Okay, so I'm going to leave an opening right here. I'm going to leave kind of, my, uh, kind of a big one. Make it a little easier on myself. I wish this pin would stop poking me. Something poked me when I was cutting out my other one. And all of a sudden I saw this really bright like dot on uh, my fat, my lining, my uh, interfacing. I was like, what's that? It looks like blood. It was blood. I was bleeding. I didn't even know it. And it was from my um, rotary knife. The classic way for me, I'll tell you, I've used rotary knives since they came out. And um, people, you know, new to them are always like, oh, I'm scared. I'm going to cut myself. And you, it just doesn't really happen very often. You know how I cut myself with that thing? I'll be cutting like this, and then it's when I bring my knife back, I will graze the top of my hand. That's how I, that's how I do it, and I don't know it. Because those things are so sharp, you just don't feel it happen at all. That's my number one common injury in sewing. Okay, so I'm going to pull this bag through this little hole here. And I'm trying not to get stuck. Yeah, that's what I thought, Rebecca. It works for most things. Um, it's really like my, my pattern drafting scissors, um, which I don't think you guys have seen. They're really specific. Um, I've had them since I graduated college. They're still amazing, but I've always had them hand sharpened too. And it's just really important that they get put back together right and all that stuff. And on a machine, they don't take them apart, but if you take them apart, you can get, the, get them really good. Okay, here's my little bag. And I'm just going to top stitch this shut with the machine. So all that work to not hand, hand sew, this is what it comes down to. This is it right here. This is the step. <laughs> I'm just going to tuck these ends in here. And edge stitch it. You can even hand sew this, but I would never do that. <laughs> No one's gonna see this. The only person that's gonna look at this is the one that's trying to copy you. <laughs> I have nothing further to say about that. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, I do that one too, Rebecca. I have so many burns on me. 
I'm an idiot when it comes to that. Look how cute this is. Okay, I just need to top stitch my ends right here, and I'm going to do that all through all the layers. Get rid of my threads there. That looks like I'm losing some of my stitching right there. I don't want to lose it. This one right here I want to lose. Yeah, these scissors need to be sharpened too. Okay, I, don't, I want all that to get tucked in there. And I want to make sure it's nice and smooth. The pin was not helping. This is my last step. Do you guys want me to sew the other bag or are you guys getting burned out? It's gonna go a lot faster than this one. So thick, that is that linen cotton canvas, man, and stuff so thick. Yeah, I did get a little tucks there on that lining. Not gonna worry about it, it's on the inside. I kinda like that this is going to uh, stitch down the lining so it's not moving around. <clears throat> yeah, I, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I will sew the other one, um, but don't feel like you guys need to stick around. I need the satisfaction of sewing something straight through right now. Voila. All the pins are gone. Get rid of this thread here. Push that all out in there. Pretty cute. Okay, what would I add to this? I would add a little pull tab right here so you can shut it really easy. You know what I mean? It's cute. This pocket with a thread inside. That's free. <laughs> okay, so, um, We got our cat. We got our succulents. So I put these little fabric things on there because I didn't want them to blow away. You know? change yeah I think it turned out cute yeah I think she'll like it too it's uh, someone who has the most amazing green thumb I have ever seen in my life and I've been around it for a really long time and um, I did not inherit this skill at all I've struggled with it so mostly all I raise is succulents and cactus um, I'm really good with animals. So when I worked on a farm, I worked in livestock. <laughs> you see that? I just threaded my needle without even thinking. So that's what I need to do. I just need to not think about it. Okay, I'm switching all to black. 
this is going to be for a guy who I know does not want any th frills. Um, I'm going to get a piece of ribbon for a pull tab, though. Where is some ribbon? I have some, like... All right, Carol, see you later. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> I know, I'm kind of like being a dead horse here, huh? What a terrible expression. Yeah, so I'm going to use the some of this as a pull tab. Oh man, this stuff's stout. I can't even put a pin in it. See how stout that is? Dang. This is not the usual stuff we buy. How weird. Don't think I knew that. Um, let me, because I just threaded my needle and my bobbin. And let me get my zippers out. They're all ready to go. Okay, so take two. We're going to do another dot kit. And I'm going to do it the way the instructions say. Hopefully I can remember all that. Pretty sure I can. Um, I would... Oh, I want that notch. Iron these edges here, and uh, those are going to be hand sewn. <laughs> Rebecca, <laughs> I think I would put this in now. Let's see, think about that. I want a little like ironing cart like right next to me. But I'd also like like um, three more cameras. Um, but I feel like if I do that, that, um, I, that it will be incompatible with my computer. It already gets so confused by the fact that I have two cameras that are identical names. All right, so we just top stitch the zipper down. Can you see that okay? Let me brighten it up a little bit. Is that too bright? That's, that's the, okay, watch your eyes. I'm going to put the auto exposure on. Oh, it didn't do anything. Okay. Okay. How's that look, you guys? Does that look too overexposed? I'm sorry, it's black. That's why I did the second one first. I knew it would be better. Okay, make sure I line this up. And uh, I'm kind of just positioning this with because I'm not using a zipper foot. So this is as close as my zipper foot can get to the... Um, <laughs> it just got more gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, I don't know if I, I can... I feel like I did better with the denim. So I can get my presser foot that close to it. And so then I just position the fabric where that needle hits. And that generally doesn't interfere with the zipper pull. From my experience, it doesn't for, for what how my machine is. And I'm just going to sew across these ends right now. And I'm also going to give this one a pull tab like that. Just a little piece of ribbon. It's nice to have something to um, grab onto, you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to actually leave this long because a ribbon can be, 
can start fraying. And if I leave it longer, uh, it won't have that possibility to do that. There we go. Now I put the ends in. I don't know what this double notch is for. I keep thinking I'll figure it out. <laughs> Okay, so now see how much whiter this is than this? They say they want this about a half inch apart. Hmm. Doesn't look like it's fitting. We'll just... I know my zipper is a little wider than what's called for, but this is really different. Really different. That's pretty different. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna top stitch across here. Top stitch across here. Set that aside. And then, yeah, so then do you just put the TV tray? Like, I, I have the ironing thing, and I have a little mini ironing board. I just want it sitting right here, and I think I can put it on one of these carts here if I got one without the handles on top, you know? That would help. Okay, I want to do the um, upper back. I'm going to do the front pocket right here, lower front and back, ten and twelve, obviously. Just ironing up that pocket edge. that it looks the same but it doesn't it look wider at this end I don't want it to be wider okay let's see here Move my zipper head. So this is definitely counter to how I would do this, uh, like sewing through that because that's a raw edge right there, and you know it's it's going to be it's not actually going to be covered by anything else, and so you might consider like overlocking that edge or maybe zigzagging it first. Uh, it's not going to be a problem just because. It's not going to get touched or anything like that, or a lot of um, like abrasion, but it could end up having some unravel threads that will come through the pocket opening. You know what I mean? So it's just something to think about. Um, let's see. Did I do the one with the? Uh, I think I do the one without the um, interfacing. How? Wait. How? Wait. Uh. Why does this look weird? <laughs> oh, because I got to iron this edge, don't I? Okay. <laughs> okay. And then I want to line up my canvas for sure. I'm going to drop that down a little bit. my zipper head okay and I'm gonna, I'm gonna secure my ends right now and I'm gonna put my backing kind of wish see this is when I wish I had um, done that um, contrast you know what I mean 
so that it showed through the pocket. Like this. I'm gonna trim that to fit that lining piece. Because again, my zipper is obviously a different width. I'm not sure what happened on the top though. That kind of concerns me just because um, it says in the instructions to make sure that the width of the opening, like between the two folded back spots are is a half inch. This right here. That's a little less, but it's not this much less. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of funny that I got that because I haven't gotten that once today or last night. And I sewed last night's like this. All right, it looks nice, nice and sharp, except for all the thread. Um, let's see, now we're going to sew top to the bottom. Mimic the back. camera on the way oh it's so too bright you guys you guys shout at me it's too bright it's just too bright I know it's hard to see the black now I'm gonna top stitch this is the back side of the bag Would having the camera down lower be easier? I don't know if any of you are really paying attention at this point since we already sewed one, but just let me know if it would. Right, I'm gonna um, sew my strap. And um, actually maybe what I'll do is just more of this ribbon to kind of tie it in. And I'll use my um, strap pattern this stuff is stiff you hear it yeah it looks better huh do you want me to lower the camera so I can't see how bright it is because I'm looking through the light of two huge lights you know what I mean so I'm about ready to take this headband off too. <laughs> Where is this? <laughs> it's the after dark stream. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tack this on here. I have a feeling I'm gonna to have to do some narrower seams. So, oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea, Rebecca. So what do you think of it right now? Like, if I brighten it, let me try brightening it a little bit. What I need to do is just never sew black again. Okay, I've only changed it once. What do you think of that? It's like, I think it's like a five second delay and it's actually not a delay. It's just, that's how long it takes. Cause I can actually add a delay to the stream and there isn't one right now. What do you think of that? Did that help at all? Do you want me to lower the camera? I wish I could see if you're typing, you know, like on an iPhone where you can see someone's typing. <laughs> But I'd probably see like six people typing at once, which would be really confusing. <laughs> Black is just the worst. No, what? <laughs> it's be not better. It's washed out, not bright. Okay.
That looks better, huh? Okay, what do you think of that? So I lowered the brightness and I increased the exposure. And then I can add contrast to make the black a little blacker. Go back. Okay. So more brightness. You like more brightness. Ooh. Less exposure. This is number three. Yes, this is this is it? Okay. This right here? Okay. Cool. I wish it would save it, but it doesn't save it. Alright, um, I just thought of something when I was doing this. I'm gonna actually make my ribbon. Remember how I told you it can um unravel? It can do that. It's kind of a funny thing, like webbing and uh, this kind of ribbon. This ribbon's not bad, see? But it can do that, this kind of thing. See that? Um, webbing and stuff like this, That the stuff that's supposed to be super strong, not three. Oh, so you don't like, okay, wait. Go back again. <laughs> you guys need to write a complete sentence. <laughs> not three. All right. Let me... Uh, No, one or two. Okay. I wish there wasn't this delay. Okay, so I'm going to... I prefer two. Let's see if this is... Is this like it? I kind of like this. I should turn off my lights in here. That way I could um, probably see the monitor a little better. Yeah, exactly. And you know, the thing is, Rebecca, like I might not remember what, because if you saw the number of controls, it's really confusing. There's like um, probably 20 things I can adjust. Yeah, the delay is tricky. So right now, are you guys liking this where it's at? Since we've been talking, since you said you need to say numbers and yeah, the delay is tricky. This is good? Okay. Do you want me to lower the camera? Tell me if you want me to lower the camera at all. I feel like it's a pretty good height. If it gets too low, you can't really see a whole lot on there. All right. So yeah, so like webbing is actually, it's, it frays really bad. Um, and so you can melt it. You can like burn the ends. Um, I don't do that a lot. It's toxic. <laughs> and um, it's not a guarantee. Sometimes that melted in can fall right off. But most of the time, it actually is the best way. So what I like to do is just keep an extra a bit hanging off. And I'm going to double stitch it. Just doing that is a huge difference. I learned this with the pocket bucket especially. I'm going to do three here because I think this one's going to get cut off. Because this right here has got to be my edge in there, right? My seam line can be like here. The height is good as it is for me. Okay, good. Yay. All right. Thanks for telling me, you guys. Yeah, when I saw that it was washed out, because I'm looking at chat. I'm trying to look at the, the picture, but the picture I'm seeing isn't what you're seeing. So, All right, so let's... um. This is the front of the bag, so I'm going to go with this seam first, and I've got to line it up with that. Like, I can kind of hang this off a little bit, but not much. Where's my seam? Where's my, where's my notch? I need that notch. Okay, here's my notch here. I'm gonna walk it and I'm gonna see what I need to do. Okay, I'm gonna start in the middle like I like to do. And I'm gonna hang off a little bit because my seam allowance looks to be a little bit wonky. I try and make sure my strap stays straight and doesn't like 
get nudged down as I'm putting it in there. Yes, yeah, so I'm a little bit off there. I don't mind being off at the bottom as much as I do um, the seam because the, how do I put this? The, the size of the bottom doesn't change if this is longer and I trim it off. Only if I trimmed it this way or this way, like trimmed off edges here and here or here and here, that would affect the um, dimensions of the bottom. But this being longer and trimming off of this edge or this edge or this edge doesn't affect that. And I, I know that's really like common sense in some ways, but when you're in the middle of sewing it, it can be really confusing especially if it's inside out, upside down and under the needle, you know what I mean? So it's certain things like that. I really had to figure out a way that I would keep it straight in my head no matter what. That way I could um, adjust, you know, on the fly. This is exactly why I don't like sewing from this side. This side doesn't stretch. So if I need to adjust anything, it doesn't happen. I need to hang this off the edge. It's just too small. I got I got to go in. If I can. I don't know what happened to that seam allowance with that zipper. My zipper's not that much wider. It's only a quarter of an inch wider. Maybe I did wasn't very good about the ironing in that first step. I don't know. But since this is my third one, I feel pretty confident that I'll be able to make any adjustments. And obviously it didn't really affect anything too badly there. Alrighty, top stitch. Okay, remember when we top stitched this, um, the other reason you would want to top stitch on this is that you don't want to go through your zipper there. That could be dicey. So remember I need to pull the handle down when I go to the top stitching, otherwise uh, I would have to start and stop again midway because the handle's gonna restrict me. So I'm just pulling it down there. It is a little tough, I will totally admit that. But once I start sewing, it gets easier and easier. Okay, going through these thick seams. It's a little less thick since I used a piece of ribbon though. That's kind of nice. I could have used webbing, but I felt like the webbing would be a little bit overkill. I think leather would be a nice touch or a fake leather. You could even like sew like a little leather patch. It would look really nice on this black. I don't have any leather in here. I think I have like one tiny little piece from a project I did when I was like 26 years old, you know. I should probably get it out and see, but I don't know, I'm not sure know where it's at anymore. Okay, that looks good. All right, let's do this one. I'm gonna do notch to notch. Why does, does this not have a notch? I notched all of those at the same time. How did my canvas get mixed? Missed. All right, so I need to hang this off a little bit because of my seam, weak seam allowance. I'm trying to compensate for the missing seam allowance on that zipper top. And then I'm going the other direction when I get to here. Kind of trying to uh, make up for it. Not ideal. Not very accurate. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to start here. Make sure I get my, um, keep my handles straight. 
The worst is when you do all this work and then your handle's crooked. It just makes everything look, you know, not as good as it is. Okay, I'm getting close, so I'm gonna release all that pressure and try and make sure it all matches now. I think that's just a, a tuck on my uh, interfacing because that's all it feels like right there. I don't feel it through the fabric. If it were uh, fusible, you wouldn't have that issue. Trim this up. Look how much faster this is, you guys. We're, all, we're to the bottom already. <laughs> the notcher tool. What is the notcher tool? What do you mean? I have a notcher tool, but I don't think it's the tool you're thinking of because mine's for making notches on patterns when I'm drafting patterns. I can show it to you. Man, canvas is so messy. Whew. Okay. Let's see, I think I'm gonna go this direction this time and see what it's like when I approach the, the handle. Oh, stop that. What are you doing that for? <laughs> Looks good. What is the notcher tool? I'm kind of curious. I think you're allowed. I think you're able to post links in my chat. I don't have that disabled yet because no one's done it or abused it. Someday when we have, you know, 30,000 people watching, oh my god, that's so frightening to think about, um, we'll have mods. <laughs> and they'll be like, don't post links. <laughs> okay, I'm just pushing my seam allowance towards the zipper panel, the top zipper panel and edge stitching as I go. My machine sounds really funny to me right now and I don't know why that is. I stick a clip in the fabric instead of cutting out the triangle. Cutting out what triangle? Oh, oh. Uh, I do not cut out triangles. I just clip in. I don't find that triangles are necessary, I guess I should say. like. You should you should do what works best for for you, like what it is that makes it easier for you. But um, I just clip in. Okay, my handle is so stiff. Eek! It's manly. Okay. Cute. Can you believe how fast this is? Except for the hand sewing is going to take me like 10 hours. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm getting a puppy. I don't have time for hand sewing. I can't believe I'm getting a puppy. I just advise someone like against getting a puppy, but she also has more kids than I do and a much bigger business. So I was like, dude, you're crazy. She did it. You line up edge seam allowance. I don't know what that means. I should probably at least clip. Are you talking about like, like um like this notch but sometimes that it's um it's drawn like a um triangle like this Rebecca is that what you mean and then sometimes you'll see like um when you, before you cut out the pattern that the triangle goes like this you know like I, I used to know sewers that would cut, come around cut and then cut out that little triangle and then keep going. And then they saw me cutting my right off and they were like, oh my God, you cut the notch off. But uh, they didn't realize that um, you could just do it a different way. 
And that was obviously really visible, but so much work. And I am a little bit of a cut cornery type of person. So I would just cut that right off. Um, and then I would just nip in like I do there. I don't know if you can see that, but I just nip in. I nip in just a little, like a less than a quarter of an inch. Yes, guess what? Because <laughs> of the delay, I'm not sure. That's what you mean though, right? Okay. I didn't know there's a tool for that. It sounds really cool. I find the more gadgets I have, the le the more fussy things get though. Okay, so I don't usually start right at the corner. I kind of start away from it, make it a little easy for myself. And um, a little bit off right there. I'm gonna just smooth that out. This one I'm definitely doing quick and dirty. And I'm gonna drop my uh, needle right there. I'm gonna make my little clip. And then I'm gonna turn my corner. At least with the white, you can kinda see. Sorry, it's so overexposed. It won't be in a second. And I'll adjust it for the lining because I think the lining will show up way better. I can feel a bump. Where is it? There it is, okay. A little fold. I just try and always make everything as flat as possible. Line it up. Line it up. Get rid of all those threads. You don't want to get them trapped like this inside there. You might feel them. And that's kind of annoying. Okay, I drop the needle in the corner. Clip. They don't use notches in quilting, right, Rebecca? It's just basically like geometric shapes and precision. I'm gonna line that up just like that. Yes, I know it's a little bit off. I'm actually not gonna do that much, just a little bit. Okay, sink my needle into the seam. Clip. That one I didn't get a very good clip on. So we'll see. All right. So here's the moment of truth. Am I going to make my corner? I'm like looking at it to see. I think so. I still kind of keep it as flat as possible though. Before I turn that corner. I'm going to clip this time since last time on the other bag. It was a little tricky right there. See, that's nicer. It wants to turn the corner and lay flatter once you release that tension. There we go. And now I'm going to cut these corners off. Make sure you don't cut yourself because you're pressing so hard it's really easy to get yourself. Yeah, right, Rebecca, exactly. And I do that a lot, especially like on center backs and collars and things, because uh, for some reason, home sewing companies don't tend to notch center backs and center fronts of bodices. I have no idea. It's probably just a, uh, because they've all been looking at each other's patterns for so long, and someone didn't do that along the way. And so they don't do it. I feel like if I had a pattern company, it would almost be annoying it would be either annoyingly sparse in information or way too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Melon. That's what I do too. Um, on something like this, chalk would have been helpful for you to be able to see where I'm doing it. But, um, you know, I'm going pretty quick and I, you can kind of see it spread apart because the black against the white background. I'm just going to trim a little bit of this off and then I'm going to top stitch it. We're going to sew our lining together after that and then we're done. That this zipper is easy to do from the inside. It's not a locking zipper, so I didn't have to worry about that. I almost did on that last one, though. I realized, oh, this isn't my zipper. I might have gotten myself into a pickle here. 
I've, I've had that happen once before and I had to actually take apart because I could not get the zipper down. Oh, pattern, okay, oh, okay. Let me show you my pattern notcher. Yeah, so this is my pattern notcher. See that? And so this is pattern paper. Uh, it's very overexposed. Let me tone it down a little bit. So, um, oh, no, you couldn't use this on fabric. Um, there's really no way to sharpen it. I've had this one. This is my second one ever. Um, I've had it a really long time. And when you clip in there, you get a notch like that. Um, and that's what you use in professional pattern drafting. Um, the other way you can do it is you can hold it upside down so you can see where you're notching like that. It's paper only. Yeah. Yeah, you can check it out the next time you're at my shop. There's not much clearance there. And see this piece right here is like a chiseled piece of metal. That's a cutting implement. So cutting, um, doing it on fabric. It's going to get like hung up in there. See that? See that it didn't really do it. It clipped it. See how it pushes it to the side? A brand new one, it probably would work. But um, I really think that just, because your scissors are, or your rotary knife is already in your hand and just doing this is better. This is more visible, obviously, but it's also tearing it up a little bit. So. And then, like, when I, when I, my notch my pattern I take a red pin not a black one and then I go like this around my notches to call attention to it I learned that somewhere else that's not typical but everyone does it differently and that's what they did and I kind of stuck with that it is nice to kind of be like oh red I need to do something over there so all right I kind of I toned down my uh, brightness there I'm just going to leave this. I'm All I'm doing right now is top stitching around this, and then I'm going to do switch to the lining. And so I feel like that'll it'll be too bright for that. So let me just stitch around this. I'm just stitching onto the bottom of the bag. I'm pushing the seam allowance of the seam I just sewed onto the bottom and sewing around it. It is quite awkward, and it's really easy to get to the end, and your seam allowance is not pointing that right way. Yeah, you're welcome, Rebecca. When you said pattern notcher, that was the first thing I thought of, but then when you said it was for fabric, I, I didn't know what you meant. And then I was picturing like a little triangle clipping tool, which, you know, literally could be out there in the world. But I feel like you'd be going, oh, where's my pattern notcher? And you're going, looking for it. When your, your rotary knife and your scissors are right there. Or just like creasing it, like you were saying, that works too. Or even doing a few of those things, so then you know what's the notch. Okay, yeah, when you get to the end, make sure you push the seam allowance onto the body of the, on the bottom there, before you turn. Like, do your last few stitches so you catch it, and then turn, and then you're on that top, that uh, stitching, or that seam allowance, sorry. I think I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Because it, it wants to push away from the bottom, not towards the bottom. It's natural, in, the seam allowance's natural inc inclination would be to be away and lay flat. All right. Okay, so here's our little bag. 
you know, if you overlocked all your stitching, you don't have to line it. I wouldn't really approve of that. And you know how I feel. I'm not really a perfectionist, but I do feel like the lining is really easy to do. So let's see. Let me get this warmed up a little bit. There's the bottom. Move that out of the way. Move this out of the way. And I'm going to look at this width right now so that I do the right one. Because what you're going to do is you're going to sew it kind of like what I did before. So I think I'm just going to do what they did there, but I feel like it's going to be a little bit narrower. Maybe not. Hanging that off a half inch. So I think if I fold this a half inch back, I'll be okay. Okay, I'm doing this first because uh, from what I remember, um, you're going to sew this now and you need, it, you need it ironed under for later so that it's easy for you to do the um, hand sewing. Like that, like that. But I am gonna not sew straight across right here. So that's, that's actually kind of wide. Let me see, let's make sure. Yeah, that would be a little bit wide. I'm gonna do a little less than that, just to make sure. And I probably should switch my seam, my uh, thread. I'm gonna do a little bit narrower. I can always make it wider. I'm just gonna do it now, just I feel like that's what's gonna happen, you know? Um, and it, it, you know, like when you're hand sewing, you really don't want it to be short, right? So, <laughs> I don't like to hand sew, so <laughs> I'm such a wimp with it. It's funny because I find it oddly satisfying on in one hand, but I am such a like, I got to get it done right away, you know? I'm impatient. Oh, see, this one's much, wait a minute. Why is this one way wider? Let's, let's do this one proper. Maybe my cutting got a bit, a bit off on this. Maybe that is why that first one was kind of funny. Those little bit, bits that are off really add up. Okay, how's the exposure right now with this lining? I'm gonna take that out of there. Is that okay? Let's take out the um, black thread. I finally found my list that I made of some of the videos that I'd like to do. I'm hoping I have some time to start doing those again. School is starting back up finally next week here. They've been out for three weeks, I think. I don't know how the school system's gonna take, take it all, fix it, you know? Like my mom worked in a school system for 17 years. She's a retired nurse and then she went and worked as a um, school nurse. Um, and um, she, even she's like, I, they, may, they may, bye Malin. Yes, absolutely. She thinks they may make the school day a little longer because it's it's so many days to make up at the end of the school year already. Um, I don't know. They haven't mentioned it. So. Okay, I'm, I'm going to top stitch this down. Hopefully I'll get myself into a pickle later. So 
like this. Do you guys think this fabric's manly enough? Or was I just crazy? I have a really hard time figuring out <laughs> what guys might like. I've tried doing guy fabrics for chicken boots and then I finally just gave up. I just try and make things that will appeal to everybody and not make them gender specific in the least. But I used to always try and have something that was just less bright and less floral because there's a lot of people who want that. Okay, flip. I keep doing it this way, huh? Like starting from the center and then working my way down. I just find it works. And when you need to make sure a three-dimensional object is going to sew together, you ensure success. Yeah, you think so? Okay, cool. Kind of herringbone-ish. It's a little crazy. Like, I don't think I could sew this for very long, you guys. This, this fabric's a little kooky. A little busy for my eyes. Don't pull, Sarami. Sorry, my, la my machine's so loud now with that whole, like, up and down. I asked him once if he could make it quieter, and um, he actually tried. Then he was like, no, I can't change that. <laughs> my other machine did, it just wasn't this loud. All right. Bottom on. At least there's no top stitching on this part. You could if you want. I do like it when a, a lining is like flush with the bag, you know, not so uh, floppy. But um, to be able to do that in this bag, like I almost got to put you guys through a bound interior because that would be the other way to get away with not hand sewing is if you if you took all the pieces and sewn them as sewed them as one like treated the lining in the self as one and then all the exposed seams just bound them like it's a whole nother way to do it but i thought you guys might rage quit on me if i did that to you <laughs> you're like binding isn't easier than hand sewing therapy well it is for me i just really enjoy doing it Well, that went together really well. Okay, I'm just going to clip these corners. See how they're like all rumpled? And then when I, when I clip it, it lays nice and flat. So you see that? I used to be so nervous when I first started sewing about clipping corners because I felt like it was too much of a commitment that I wouldn't be able to do anything. But the thing is, you can't go forward without clipping those corners. It won't look good. It won't hang well. And everyone will know. They can tell something's up with that corner. I'm just going to trim this to make it a little tidier. That's all. So awkward cutting like this. Okay. Uh, I don't need to turn it right side out because this is how it's going to be inside the bag. But I will say, actually, I did find it easier putting it on the bag inside out. I'm gonna give it a good shake because of all these threads. I'm gonna trim some of them. They're just gonna keep coming back. This canvas is, that's how canvas is. It's a real big pain to work with. I'm leaving my zip, my uh, ribbon tails there. Won't be able to detect those through the fabric at all. If it were a light colored fabric, I might have to do something different. Like I can always like hem it onto itself like that. 
you know? So. So now you would go through a, a task of um, pinning it and hand sewing it to this edge right here. Okay, so this is another good example of the fact that I did the other grain line. So if I had followed this grain line, this would be rotated 90 degrees. So the way you're seeing this, I used the grain line like this. You know, that makes sense? So something to note. It would look totally different. It would the, the stripes would be going this way. And if you had like elephants or something like that, it would be really obvious that they were all sideways in there. Okay. Look how clean finish it's gonna look though. Really lovely. Really nice. Okay, I'm just kinda I'm just fussing with it, making sure it's all like in these corners here. That's all I'm doing with my hands. I'm just kind of seating it. Like, you know, making sure it's all like fitting in there really well. I don't want it to get like torqued and wonky. So that's why I am spending the time doing this. Um, if you were sewing a lot of these and you got really good at it, you literally could just start hand sewing your little spot. I can't feel the corner on this side. I think I have the wrong corner in there. There we go. There we go. Um, because if, once you start being able to trust your pattern, you're sewing, you're cutting your seam allowances, you could just like start hand sewing, you know, put it down, get it in place, and then, um, you know, not have to fuss with it like I am right now. But like we did have that little bit of a seam allowance issue and I did wanna make sure. So I'm gonna kind of pin this so it's invisible to the outside so we can turn it to the right side and see what it looks like. I'm just like pushing it like this with my hands. It's those kinds of things that really make your project start, um, you know, coming together, you know? I think if I were to make a bunch of these for gifts, I might do something new. I don't know if I would make it simpler. Maybe I would Maybe I would do the hand sewing method um, or just not pick that kind of a decorative zipper. That took me a little while to figure out how I was gonna do that, huh? Um, or maybe I would bind. So I, I don't mind binding. I quite enjoy it. I can't use my binding machine on something like this either. It looks good, you guys. It even looks good down here and I haven't even fussed with it yet. You know? Not bad. I'm gonna pin it now so that when it's the other way, I can hand sew it if I want. Um, but most likely I'll turn it to the, like this, like wrong side out, that'll be a lot easier. But for the moment, let's turn it to the right side and see how it looks. I think this could use a little interior pocket. Maybe without the um, flap over it though. All right, guys. Problem with solids, they show everything. When I'm taking photographs, it, everything looks perfect until I look through the camera lens and I'm like, what the heck, where'd all those threads come from? I can't set anything down, you know, sometimes on the ground. I would never anyway. 
I don't want to poke out my corners too much because the pins are poking me. This looks like a different bag, doesn't it? Like the dimensions of it look totally different. Ah! There go my scissors. All right, what do you guys think? It's so hard to see, sorry. Let's bring the green up here. The green is pretty cheerful. I do have these pretty slick uh, zipper pulls. This one. I thought that would be great on this one. So I have one here. You can see how these work. This is the doohickey. See that? It's like a little um, hinge. These things inside here, these little spikes are really sharp. Um, and then um, you cut your cord as long as you want. And this stuff frays like you would not believe. So you have to burn it. Because there would be nothing to grab onto if not. So I'm going to kind of, I'm just burning it, see? Don't ever throw your match in the garbage can until it's really co cooled off. And then I just take these plastic tips. They're already like barely warm. And sometimes you just lay them in this. Sometimes you lay them on this side. I found yesterday that I had better luck when I laid it on this side. And I kind of seat it in there. Oh, but I have to put it through the... I got to put it through the zipper first. Otherwise, it's useless. Okay. All right. I kind of get it seated on those spikes there. You really got to get it centered. Now, this is the thing to pity anyone that does in a factory. Because closing these things is not easy. All right, there we go. Looks pretty good, huh? I have a ton of those for a project and I don't need to use them anymore. <laughs> All right, you guys. Okay, which one do you guys like best? I like the cats. <laughs> but I like that this one's completely done and I don't have to do any hand sewing. <laughs> Fluff it. All right. Do this one. Cats, yeah, <laughs> I like the cats too. I think I got that fabric at Honey Run Quilters. I was, I've been collecting black and white cat fabrics for so long. What's this thread? What is this thread? All right, you guys have any questions? <laughs> Now's the time. There's my little pole tab. So see, this one's a little easier to close. It could have used a pole tab on this side too, to be honest. Because, like, opening it... But I can use the handle. Never mind. I take that back. You can use the handle. It would have been a little redundant. Um, and I can put a... Um, one of these little doohickeys... Right here, too. Let's do that.
Can you tell I came from the outdoor industry? You should see all the outerwear stuff I still have. It's pretty fun. Sometimes um, when I would go to trade shows and I'd go to these vendors, these kinds of vendors, the people that do all this stuff, as a designer, they really want you to come by their booth and they want to show you all their doohickeys. They want you to design things. Because sometimes, you know, like something like this, can design, you it could, you know, maybe not like this, but you know, like these little doodads, sometimes they're the inspiration behind an entire jacket. You just never know. And um, they, that's why they want you because then you're going to buy 5,000 of them, you know, but they would give me free samples and I still have a lot of those free samples, but it just means I have like one sometimes or a pair. See, this one didn't go so well. There we go. Got it. Once it's there, it's really secure. It's almost impossible to get this thing open. That makes that look more polished, you know? And uh, I'm, I'm going to add, like, on this one, this is what I was thinking. Either some of this or some of this. I think the polka dots are cuter. This one has this. So maybe... Um, I'm going to sew it really narrow. Let's see if I can do it. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> now we're nerding out. <laughs> okay, here we go. I can get through. Yeah, that works. Something like that. Try and get that zipper slider to lay flat. I'm going to cut this straight off because it's bias. Bias doesn't ravel. That works. Maybe a little shorter. I'll do it at an angle just because it's cuter. How's that? <laughs> Here we go. And then our cats. So. All right, guys. That's enough dob kits for today. Uh, and I really thank you for coming and if you have any questions, just let me know and, uh, let me know if you choose to hand sew or go with the other route because I want to know and, um, be sure to tag anything you sew that you want me to see with the hashtag so, so live, because I do want to see what you guys make. So please let me know. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at so, so Live. My name is Sarah Mee, and we made the port side travel set dop kit only. Uh, there's a duffel bag and a pouch as well. So you're welcome. Thanks, Rebecca, and um, thanks for coming. I'm looking forward to what we make next week because I feel like I've got so many things in here. I'm not even sure what it's going to be, but I'm sure we'll come up with something fun. I didn't even plan on doing this this week, so this is great. All right, uh, take care, have a great weekend, and um, we will see each other really soon. Bye.